Feeling tired is often the biggest battle we fight. For me, my brain is fried, as in does not compute, after 7 p.m. I can barely hold a conversation and mama's patience is very thin. Part of my early energy demise is because I wake up at 4.40 a.m. What? why do I wake up so early? And that's my protected time to pray and exercise in peace and quiet before I have to drive the kids to school. I'm just better in the morning. And neuroscience and behavioral studies show that we tend to think more clearly and be more productive in the early morning hours compared to the end of the day. Before I lowered my stress level and started to eat healthy, I would feel exhausted, like needed to pass out on the couch at 8 a.m. when I got home from dropping the kids off at school. And if I wasn't needing a nap at 8 in the morning, I would most likely crash on the couch after school at 4. Feeling this tired interrupted my day, blocked my flow of what I wanted to accomplish, and prevented me from being the mom I wanted to be when my kids and husband came home. And it was big enough, this problem, for me that I ran lab tests to see if something was wrong with me. I tried working with nutritionists, and honestly, that was disappointing. I saw very little improvement, and I actually had to fire one of the nutritionists before I even finished my sessions with her. My point, dear friend, is that I understand the struggle of exhaustion and how it not only interrupts your life, but how it can turn you into kind of a gremlin. Angry mommy and not available mommy. You don't have quality time for your husband and you can easily slip into survival mode where you lose yourself. You're unhappy, feel guilty, and want to give up. So let's do something about the daily energy drain. Working from the inside out, the best way to approach this is understanding the mistakes you're making that drain your energy. Here are the top five, from number five down to number one. Number five, overdoing it. Now, there are a lot of components to this one, right? There's too much on the schedule. You've got so many requests for your time, so many needs that you feel you have to meet. And so we just fill up the schedule. You, you're going back to back to back, meetings at work, with the family, health, financial, I mean, you name it. There's just too much scheduled. Another part of this is saying yes to everything. Kids activities. That's a big one. Helping at the school, helping at church, saying yes to colleagues or clients at work, saying yes to to more learning programs. So that's a big one. And then making your to-do list too long for one day. It's not always the number of tasks, but when you're planning your days, you need to evaluate the complexity of the task. In my experience, most things take longer than you think they will. So give yourself space. And if something takes longer or it doesn't get done quickly, that's okay. Now, to shift the overdoing, you need to deal with your FOMO, with people-pleasing and insecurities, which drive the overdoing. So you also have to assess what kind of help you currently have with this. If it's very little, then assess why you're not asking for more help with all the things you have to do. For example, help cleaning the house, driving your kids places, meal prep, and shopping. You're not a robot last time I checked, so you're not meant to do all those things yourself. And it doesn't mean that you're weak and you can't handle it because you ask for help. When you do too much yourself, you fall into self-reliance. And you don't want to go there because then God is not your provider. He's not the source of your strength. And you can't receive the torrent of love and mercy that you need from him. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 says, Cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Number four, underdeveloped muscles. Nope, not your biceps and your quads. Except for maybe David Goggins, because that guy's like a machine. We are pretty weak humans. 
We are so conditioned for comfort and pleasure that our discipline muscle is puny. Take me, for example. I eat sparingly and very healthy, but man, I struggle with fasting and giving up that one little tasty thing I want, even if it's good for me, like a vegetable. It's so hard. Where is your discipline muscle weak? Is it food, a drink, shopping, social media, Netflix? And no judgment here at all because I'm wrapped up in my own comfort issues. But I need to ask and be honest. How's your addiction to your comfort thing going for you? Now, you might be thinking, well, Stacy, well, what's wrong with treating myself? Is this really a big deal? Treating yourself, it's not always bad or wrong, but if your discipline muscle is weak, you can't say no. You can't limit yourself. You can't break negative habits. And you don't realize this when the waves of life are gentle. Then when the storms of life come along, you fold under the pressure like cheap lawn furniture. You check out or you get angry and yell. You treat others poorly because you're stressed or afraid. Does that make sense? There are also many spiritual reasons for having strong discipline, but that's a big topic for another episode. Another muscle that's often underdeveloped is your courage muscle. Are you using your voice to speak up? Are you upholding your boundaries? Getting out of a job you know isn't right for you? Living a Christian life, not one of the world? Do you show up as your authentic self and talk to others about your faith? Now, why is courage such a big deal? Well, consider the opposite. If you are in fear and contraction, you're suppressing emotion, compromising your conscience, and often going against God's will. And that's exhausting. You don't want to live in fear energy or resist God's will. It will only drain you and disappoint you. Number three, not celebrating your wins. Our brains are programmed to have a negativity bias. Your brain is going to, it's never going to just naturally celebrate you without training. Okay. We've become naturally attuned to the deficit, what we didn't get done and how we fell short and what we lack. So if you're not used to celebrating your wins, It will feel uncomfortable at first. Your brain will try to talk you out of it and say, you didn't do anything great today. Nothing really good happened. This win thing, this is not important. Just skip it. But as we're learning here, our thoughts are not always the truth. Okay, remember that. Reflect with me now. What goes into your equation that adds up as the measure of your day? Do you celebrate your goodness and little achievements? Do you allow your moments of love to have great significance? How full is your gratitude cup? Really, truly full. You feel it. If you struggle to see your wins, your worth, or you know you just want more wins, more positive meaning, but you aren't sure how to create this, that's okay. It's normal. And that's what we do in the Right Order Life program. So you're humming along in a way better mood and feeling good about who you are. Number two, overthinking the negative. What are you thinking about that's negative? The past is a big one. I know I've had clients who think very often replaying their past, what they think are mistakes, their trajectories, things that didn't work out. You might also be thinking about your overwhelming to-do list all day long, fears, problems. Remember, we know that your emotions are created by your thoughts. So if your positive to negative thought ratio is far greater on the negative side, which statistically for most humans it is, I believe the stat is about 80% of an average person's thoughts are negative, then you probably feel unwanted emotions most of the time. 
whether you're suppressing negative emotions, that means stuffing them down inside and ignoring them, or feeling them as you move through your day, is extremely draining. We all got problems, that's for sure. But there is a way to handle your problems so that they don't feel like big, heavy problems. You can dissolve them and move through them like the cork that bobs right back up. You may have heard me mention this imagery before. If you imagine a bathtub filled with water and there's a cork floating peacefully on the surface and then you turn it on the faucet full blast and that cork takes a beating from all the cascading water pushing down and the cork goes below the water. Well, there's a way to turn off that faucet and then your cork pops right back up it just went under for a few moments, but it's back up and your energy is restored because now you know how to do that. And that's another thing we teach in the Right Order Life program. And number one, the number one mistake that drains your energy is giving other people your power. Even my children do this when they let each other tease each other. I say, why are you giving them your power? Why are you reacting like that? Why are you giving him the ability to get you riled up? Now, giving away your power to other people includes worrying about what other people think of you, comparing yourself to family members, friends, and even famous people you admire. If you're a people pleaser, please know you are not alone. One of the three things our subconscious mind is always striving for is approval. It's hardwired in. Plus, so many of us learn growing up that we have to make others happy, perform and impress them with good behavior and accomplishments in order to receive love and have self-worth. And all of this is incredibly draining. If you're making even just this one mistake, I would be shocked if you weren't exhausted. Without the awareness or tools to interrupt this pattern of comparing, people-pleasing, and worrying about what other people think of you, You don't know how to stop it. It's going to suck the life out of you. You keep torturing yourself by being afraid of conflict, not using your voice to speak up, and staying status quo instead of following your heart. And inevitably, you unintentionally model to your kids and they're victims to the same condition. Question for you. What did you notice about these five mistakes? They are not superficial actions. The problem of feeling so tired and drained runs deep in your mind and heart. The roots go way down under the ground and they're anchored there. And once you move below the stems and under the cold ground, you reach the thick roots of hurting and negative emotion, pain like abandonment, not being enough, loneliness, Guilt, failure, disappointment, and grief. My friend, I talk about how deep these mistakes run because I'm not about band-aids. If you just want to hum along in your life and make some tweaks here and there, by all means, read a self-help book. But if you want the more your heart calls for, if you want to heal so you can feel light, alive, loved, and on the right path, that I invite you to do the deeper work. Ask yourself, am I living the dream on my heart? If I continued to live like I am now for the next 20, 30, or 40 years, what would I regret? Am I showing up the way I hope my kids will show up in their own lives? If your answer is no, if you feel the weight of regret or If you don't like any of your answers to these questions, I challenge you to do something about it. Don't wait. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. I stand for transformation and I know how to achieve it. Having seen so many beautiful women wake up, be at peace, find fulfilling work, and love living as their best selves, yeah, I'm on a mission to help you have this too. And one of my favorite sayings is go big or go home. It's time to go big, my friend. Trust me, the payoff will be far bigger than you can imagine. Let's talk about what you need and how to get it. 
grab a time on my calendar by clicking the link in the show notes or clicking the link at the top of the page at stacysantiago.com. My friend, if you've ever got a question you'd like to ask me, I'm a real human and I love to help. DM me on Facebook or email me directly at stacy at stacysantiago.com and I'll respond personally. I always look forward to hearing from listeners like you, so I look forward to seeing your name in my DMs or inbox.